tell the story of Don Heath Morris is to tell the story of Abilene Christian College. His life was not only in and of the college, but their beginnings, too, were almost equal in time. Don Morris was born August 13, 1902, in DeSoto, Texas. The original family home was barely a stone's throw up the hill to the left of this house, now considered the Morris home place. Young Don grew up in this house, which originally had a second story, upper and lower porches, and the fancy grillwork of its day. He was of hardy stock. His grandparents moved to the virgin land south of Dallas, where they homesteaded, reared their children, and tilled their fields. This old bell, which now hangs behind the DeSoto home, is a delight in the hands of any youngster. And young Don Morris was no exception. At mealtime, he would tug the rope and send waves of rich bongs across the fields, telling the workers that it was dinner time. As he grew older and school time approached, young Morris was filled with as much apprehension about the first grade as any student. But each day, he'd walk down a dusty road to the small school in DeSoto. As he rounded the corner, He'd glance back toward home, and the arms of the old windmill his grandfather had built seemed to wave at him. The years passed quickly, punctuated with work on the family farm in summers and school in the winters. School was a serious business for him, and he graduated when he was only 16. In 1918, with World War I virtually ended, he said farewell to all his friends and became a college man. Thorpe Spring Christian College was a two-year college near Granbury, some 60 miles west of DeSoto as the crow flies. It was a pioneering effort in Christian education, built on the foundations established earlier by Addison and Randolph Clark. Perhaps it was his early experience on the farm that helped Don get the job as official bell ringer for the college. This bell, in his hands, sounded time for classes, meals, and quiet hours. Heron Hall, once the college home of Don Morris, has been remodeled into the Thorpe Spring Church of Christ building. While a student, Don was president of his dormitory, vice president of his senior class, a Yale leader, a member of the Glee Club, and editor of the yearbook. The 1920 yearbook says of Don Morris, he is jovial in disposition. His heart is as big as his smile. Be his duty great or small, it is always cheerfully done. In a shady valley on the rolling campus, a college literary group built this dais for oratory and debates performed before students seated on the grassy slopes. After teaching school for two years at Red Oak, near his hometown, young Don took a leap westward arriving in Abilene in the fall of 1922. Abilene then became his home for the rest of his life. By 1924, he had not only earned a bachelor's degree in education, but he had served as president of his senior class, headed to the yearbook, served as a Yale leader, was a member of the debate team, and by the way, never lost a debate during his college years. Shortly after taking a teaching position at Abilene High School in 1924, a college time romance bloomed into marriage. Don Morris and Alberta Allen were married November 1, 1924. Mrs. Morris was not only a full-time mother to their three children, but she was a full-time comrade of and to her husband. Tens of thousands of persons have heard Dr. Morris refer warmly and affectionately to his wife as good old team team was at her husband's side at most of the thousands of banquets, dinners, and speaking engagements involving her husband, because to him, she was a vital part of the team. Today, she busies herself with many projects, including caring for their home across from the campus. The administration building has not always been ringed with the green of trees and grass. Yet, it was the base of operation for President Morris for almost four decades. It was from here that he began thousands of trips, covering hundreds of thousands of miles on behalf of the college. Many of these trips were made with B. Sherrod, 
chairman of the Board of Trustees from 1947 to 1967. Mr. Sherrod, how well did you get to know President Morris? I think outside of his uh, staff there at the college, I was with him more than any, any other one person over the 20 years that uh, we traveled together. We, of course, discussed mostly Abilene Christian College. That was Brother Morris's whole life, and that was about the only thing we discussed is the workings of the college and the prospects we were calling on. And then in the evening, we had uh, dinner together, and we discussed uh, the students and their activities, personal matters of students, the teachers. Sometime we discussed uh, ambition and the uh, desire to build a greater Abilene Christian. That was the main topic of conversation with him in regard to what Abilene Christian College meant to him and the student body. Many of their trips together were to the Edwards Ranch, southeast of Fort Stockton in far west Texas. From these contacts, which began in 1947, Mr. William M. Edwards chose to will his entire 66 section ranch to the college. It is to the credit of Don Morris and B. Sherrod that Abilene Christian College can today realize some of the potential value of this vast holding. The ranch headquarters is a comfortable 14 room house built from thick native stone. Its design, including tile roof and a broad, breezy porch, makes it cool in summer and warm in winter. Its location in this vast land is striking. The nearest neighbor is some 10 miles away, and a drive to town is an 80-mile round trip. It's the land of the working cowboy, where the shafts and saddle are everyday items. Here, a lone cowboy may work his cattle, or tend his sheep, and he may frequently spot a deer or two. The land is rugged, possessing a beauty all its own. Basically, it's an arid land, as evidenced by the lack of trees. Mesas as well as valleys are covered with rough cedars, sage, and prairie grass. Water is a precious commodity in this land, and windmills are often the only evidence of human habitation. But give the land a little water and a little care, and it can grow anything. Life-giving water on the Edward Ranch is deep, six to seven hundred feet. But the ever-present breezes assure a full tank for livestock. Proven gas fields flank the ranch. And when current testing is completed, a new day may dawn for the endowment of Abilene Christian College. 